Recording Recording is on. on. Well, greetings, everybody. It's uh, November the 25th. Happy Thanksgiving Thursday. Um, So, yeah, it's a conversation between Hugh and Bob. Um, Bob, you're in London. Is that right? I am. I am in London. And I'm in Greece. So, yeah. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. I, I mean, I know that uh, English Thanksgiving is July the 4th, but um, yeah. English, yeah, I just think there is no giving thanks in England because, you know, we're no, in no, England. No, no, no that's, that's the joke. It's July the 4th is yeah. American Independence Day. So yeah, no, 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 I know. Yeah. I think it's... Uh, American uh, in- yeah. Independence was English Thanksgiving. <laughs> England I don't think English thanks people... Americans being independent. I don't think English but, people could care less. That's. I think that's one of those things that Americans yeah. always uh, yeah. surprised about. <laughs> Unless you happen to go to an, an American themed bar on a certain day of the year, but yeah. But um, yeah. yeah. Special relationship and all. Come on. <laughs> yes. Well, exactly. Exactly. It's just, yeah. That's a whole other thing, isn't it? You've got to turn up in a so, row. And stuff. Yeah. So anyway, what's what's on your mind? So, ah, oh, lots. There's a lot on my mind. That's a bit, a bit of an open question. So, I, I think the, the um, one of the sort of main topics um, I wanted to talk to you about, and especially since the um, meetings last Sunday, I guess it opens up a bit, even or strengthens my interest in this question, which is you've talked about various uh, spiritual things, for want of a better word, uh, which I'm sure there are better words. Um, uh, and particularly, you've talked about uh, meditation, and I have a interest in discussing or asking about the mechanics of the process, which you've kind of mentioned. But in all the stuff I've seen, I don't, I don't know if you went into any sort of in-depth instructions. So I'm kind of interested, uh, you know, uh, from the point of view of like having a, a manual or an explanation of what your approach is, because um, with a lot of topics that that you bring up, um, there's a tendency for you to sort of say, oh, well, you know, there's all this sort of flim flam around this topic, but if you cut to the core, um, actually all it is is this. And in uh, lots of different fields, I always think it's interesting to hear that sort of point of view uh, because I think this is probably true that human beings have discovered interesting things and then um, added layers and layers of crap on top, partly maybe because you just need to fill the time or, you know, you need to punch your um, punch the clock at work or something and you need to come up with, you know, extra stuff or you, you ought to write a scientific paper um, or whatever it is. So, so uh, as I say, in various fields, I always find it very, very interesting when someone says, well, all of this is good good and all but it's all a load of bullshit and this is actually what this is about and when you uh, describe meditation you sort of go well all of this is all bullshit but basically it's just about looking at your phosphenes and um, so I'm interested in um, uh, sort of exploring what you mean by that in terms of the um, Vorsprung durch Technik or whatever um, of the subject um and yeah so that's one thing and then and then extrapolating from that maybe uh, what it's for and maybe to try and maybe we can't do this in maybe such an easy fashion but to try and understand a little bit how this weighs against uh your view of like you've mentioned maybe awakening or enlightenment as a sort of spiritual thing on one hand you have a s- somewhat cynical view or again you know let's cut through the bullshit view maybe Uh, at the same time you do bring up that there's some sort of point in attaining maybe a certain spiritual state in lieu of the entire uh fucking of of the whole world thing that's about to happen um yeah i don't know so that cover a few (laughs) things we could talk about yeah that's plenty for for at least an hour's chat um i did do one video way I did describe how to do meditation just look at the fast things. So, okay, first of all, what is yeah. it all? Yeah, yeah, no, I've, I've heard that, but there must be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so, so why meditate at all? What's the, what's the bloody point? <laughs> well, the bloody point is um, ego dissolution. So it's ego destruction. That's what the point yeah. of all meditation is. 
Now, there are a couple of things. Why practice it? Why you know, just cut the crap and just look at the phosphines? Well, the reason why people make such a song and dance about it is, well, one of the reasons you kind of pointed at, and that's a lot of people making a living out of this. So, you know, mm -hmm. people make a living out of bullshit. And so there's a lot of it in our world. Um, but you can just cut to the chase. You don't need a mantra. One of the things that Hindu gurus and stuff is, they enslave people by giving them a mantra, and then it's a secret mantra, and so they have to, yeah. in, in, in essence, buy it and give service to the guru and so be as yeah. kind of slave. That's the, the TM a, people do that sort of thing. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Transcendental meditation and, and uh, the Maharishi. And, yeah, he he raked in the 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 Beatles. <laughs> this is big business. Yeah. If you go to sexy Sadie, um, what have you done? Exactly, exactly. If you if you go to um, Pondicherry and you go and go to the, the center, there <laughs> they can strip all your money off you for um, they like rich people there. Um, yeah, but rich people are suckers for it because they they kind of lost in the world. But it's mm -hmm. it's easy to say what the goal is is ego destruction, and the reason why you want to destroy your ego is because it's a source of ignorance and suffering. And mm -hmm. the you know I. It's um, it's difficult because it becomes a cliche, and so what uh, you've got to reinvent and kind of rename it and, and kind of rediscover yeah. it, represent this whole dish, which is a very you know lukewarm, stale leftover dish, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and you have to represent it as something new so that uh, people don't just uh, it, uh, so it just doesn't seem corny. So, ah, oh, may so, I interject? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, right, okay. So, so here's a thing that's uh, uh, again slightly tangential, but there's this um, sense. And again, I feel like I'm I'm an outsider, but I, I'm I'm a lurker with a, a foot in the door. Maybe I don't know. But in terms of there's a sort of group of people who've been talking to each other about some very interesting topics, and there's there's two. Um, approaches. One of them is like the approach of uh, presenting topics to the sort of broader audience outside this group of people who are, already have, uh, you know, a certain viewpoint or a certain understanding of the world. And then, but what seems sometimes to be missing. So, but basically, you're saying, okay, you're presenting something to a group of people outside of the extinctionati, and that's one thing. But within the extinctionati, there's a bunch of people already have an understanding and maybe want to uh, explore things from the point of view of having that understanding already. I don't know if that's coherent. So in other words, so I, I want to ask you about the meditation thing. I mean, I've watched your video about it. Um, I have some experience with meditation. I, I haven't had a teacher. Uh, I've been through periods of my life where I've done it sort of fairly seriously to the extent of doing it for one hour a day, looking at various uh, instructions that I've read and trying things out and had some pretty strong um, experiences of it and I've you know I've done all the sort of reading and I've looked at a lot of um, people who claim that they're enlightened or that they've achieved this level or that level of attainment and I've got my sort of opinion uh, you know not uh, it's not experiential necessarily but this sort of end goal of meditation or dissolution of the ego I have some sort of sense of what that might be uh yeah so i'm so i'm thinking more within a sort of like okay uh you want to present the idea in a in a different way to people who've gone oh yeah 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 we've heard all of this um but at the same time if i wanted to yeah if, so so okay why why do i want to let's say i i don't need to get a maharishi mantra or something but i'm doing meta or i'm doing just mindfulness or i'm fo following this kind of you know basic meditation thing so uh, i i am interested in like why the phosphine thing is 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 that different from doing some sort of breath focus or something like that it wasn't that clear to me from the video i guess okay so the, yeah um okay yeah, let me start from the the top about people um, kind of, you know, being acquisitive and getting points. So, you know, we kind mm -hmm. of live in an insane world. Everybody's kind of insane. And everything's yeah. upside down in this world. You can just except for me, obviously. <laughs> yeah, except for, no, for everybody, their world's <laughs> the right way up and everybody else has got it the wrong way around. But, um, yeah, so they're thinking of it exactly the wrong way around. 
they're thinking of spiritual attainment and getting points like it's some video game. It's the actual opposite. You're losing points. You're losing the game all the time. So the, the aim is to get out of the game. The only way mm -hmm. you can get out of the game is die. <laughs> but you can have an early death in the kind of spiritual death or cognitive death. It's really what I'd say mm -hmm. is the death of your intellect or what I call your, your alien cortex, just to be mm -hmm. original. <laughs> Falsely original. It's not original at all. But I, I can get away with it for a while. But you just plagiarized all this. Yes, yeah, so of course it did. But if I just used the, the traditional names for stuff and everybody would say, oh, yeah, yeah, this is corny old crap from the yeah. Rishi or something. So you can't take that route. Um, so, yeah, but it's difficult to describe to people. They say, well, why would you want to do something? Why would you want to attain religious experiences? You want to say, no, you don't. You want to, they all makyo, they all, um, the devil's cave, they're distractions. They, the way that mm -hmm. your intellect or your alien cortex protects itself. So the end of, so there is such a thing as enlightenment, but the experience of enlightenment, if people really knew what it was, they wouldn't be so keen to rush for it. <laughs> yeah. Because pre-enlightenment, it's psychosis. So, you know, you if if all these gurus were completely upfront with you, they're saying, they would say, oh, do you want to be psychotic? Do you want to go have a psychotic break with the world? And then mm -hmm. suddenly the room would empty <laughs> quickly. So they yeah. they showered in all this, you know, flowers and you know this thing. Say, oh, you know, you'll be a Buddha and you'll have a halo and you'll swan through life with rose petals at your feet and nothing will go wrong for you. <laughs> and it's like horseshit. The first yeah. thing that happens is um, after the enlightenment is then the work really starts. Then then your difficulties start um, because then you're in a whole new world. You have to. You know, start from scratch again, like you did when you were a baby. It really is like a rebirth. So you know, it's yeah, it's a struggle. Um, there's there's nothing to be said for it in terms of um, advertising. Uh, if you sure. advertise exactly as it was, nobody would do it. But so then, um, have you have you sort of seen um, people talking about um, what they call sort of non-dual awakening? There's like a, quite a lot of people are available on YouTube, and they have this sort of sort of empty look and they're talking about sort of enlightenment but in a in a non-religious sense but i think they're basically saying they they've experienced the dissolution of the the ego um yeah so the, the the so the ultimate result is non-dualism they mm -hmm. they are often talking crap and you can hear it when you probe a little bit but you see the, the non-dual experience is utterly solipsistic so they, mm -hmm. they really are dualists. You can tell the way they, they talk and they, they say, oh, I am enlightened. They say, like, you wouldn't say that if you're enlightened. <laughs> there would be no yeah. I. So what they're saying is, I'm one up on you. <laughs> and you can hear yeah. it. So uh, there's a huge danger in all of this uh, that you develop a cast iron spiritual ego. So th there are a lot of guys there that are considered spiritually advanced. They're actually spiritual retards. But because yeah. they've, you know, got quite high in a religious hierarchy, or they become quite venerated in a certain group, and they have followers, then they become venerated, and they start, mm -hmm. you know, having this folie d'oeuvre. People praise them, and then they, they, the ego gets polished, and they become more and more artificial and affected. And uh, underneath, the psychology is not good. The psychology is going wrong. Mm -hmm. And if they get challenged, they get very angry. And they expose themselves. Yeah. So what they're doing is they they kind of nursing a snake. They they kind of um, making a pet out of the alien cortex that they should be um, and polishing it, um, and uh, that they should actually be destroying. So they they they're going in completely the opposite direction, but they can fake a deep voice and serotonin and some you know the the kind of trappings of enlightenment yeah. um, and fool a lot of people. But uh, so, so that, that's one of the rule. And it's very, very hard to find a, a real uh, spiritual teacher. And they'll generally, they'll, they'll try and avoid you <laughs> because, because yeah. they, they kind of, uh, you know, the, the whole world is kind of lost. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah um, they, don't, they don't want to waste time with 
idiocy. It's, it's like wasting time on social media. It's just like wall-to-wall -wall idiots. Um, yeah, yeah, no, so, for sure. I mean, so, 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 uh, can we sort of use phosphine meditation to achieve this dissolution or you know detachment from the ego or destroy the ego? Um, or, you know, or, or you know, if we follow this, are we going to become psychotic and then lose the ego if if you follow it correctly? And you know, is there is there a kind of a pathway um, to this? And in, in, at the same time, how what the fucking use is that to me if if I'm going to be flipping and basically freezing to death or starving in the next five to ten years? Yeah, well, you, these are very pertinent questions, and you have to work them out for yourself. So, um, there's, you know, there's no requirement to do it. Uh, sure. Yes, but to me, it makes all the sense in the world because the anybody that actually got somewhere in philosophy, like, you know, say, Socrates said, you know, the unexamined life is not worth living, and so. Mm -hmm. The general of effect, or especially of non-dualism, is is a complete, utter, overwhelming love of consciousness and conscious life. Um, so yeah. it becomes inconceivable not to 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 do this if um, if you think that way. But you kind of, since people are egotistical and cut off from that oceanic um, solipsism, mm -hmm. uh, they. Yeah. They, um, you know, you you can't you can't really um, express it to them, and then they can't and, and say, you know, oh, you should you should get there. It's 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 all part of the play, and it doesn't really matter what anybody does in the end. But if you actually achieve that vision, um, mm -hmm. you just couldn't do anything else. <laughs> it just yeah. But well, I mean, to I me, it sort of strikes me that it. some people shuffle off. I must say that after enlightenment, mm. um, it's it just depends on I think pretty much what happened before enlightenment. But a lot of people yeah. just shuffle off; they just shuffle off and die. I mean, people, yeah. people I mean, that would make sense. Into uh, caves and just starve themselves yeah. to death. And yeah, I mean that's a uh, samadhi suicide, isn't it? Yeah, samadhi uh, is suicide. <laughs> oh, maybe yeah. But for some, some, some people, people, they love life and come back to life yeah. you know, and, and help yeah. other people. Yeah, I mean, to me, to me, it seems that uh, in the face of, again, a po possible, and uh, you know, I do think a lot about sort of characters like John Michael Greer when when they very smugly announce that, or he, well, he in particular very smugly announces that the possibility of a some massive catastrophe is is not a realistic thing, and everything is just going to sort of uh, amble downwards. But on the assumption that like a massive catastrophe um, looks like a, a you know at least a reasonable possibility um i think that the object of attaining some level of equanimity so my, my impression of the state of uh enlightenment or ego dissolution or i i don't know the right term but yeah killing your ego would be to to basically reach a place of intense calmness so that you're become unflappable and in uh, achieving that sort of a state you might provide a service to the other people who are freezing and starving to death around you or whatever, um, who, you know, last week were planning their holiday to Torremolinos and suddenly everything's gone mental and there's, you know, the world has changed around No, them. no, it's not like that. So, so that, the idea that you become unflappable and serene and then you become a rock that other people can, <laughs> can uh, lean on is mm -hmm. is incorrect that's that's mm -hmm. the false thing that i was talking about that's the common misconception mm -hmm. and a lot of people are faking it you know you, um especially religious no, but that's they weren't faking it though. If, yeah but obviously those you know all leaders are uh basically not to be trusted but if, if i were to um uh go through uh you know and and, and again but bearing in mind that from my uh, whatever limited awareness, it seems to me that getting any attainment is the equivalent of trying to become like a concert pianist or something. I mean, you really have to do sort of four to eight hours a day of work. But assuming I could attain some state of like um, egolessness or whatever it might be, um, what's so what what's what's it for if not to then? I mean, as in if if I can authentically be in that state and I'm not just pretending or using the perception of that to be 
uh, a leader or an asshole, but I'm I'm literally just uh, I at attain that state. Is that not what what I would do with no. it? Just uh, no, it, it's it's quite misleading. In fact, Pierre mm -hmm. Mucchio, to think of it as an exalted state that you should attain is the yeah. very. I mean, think of it more as a complete ordinary state. I mean, we yeah. we we're chimps. I mean, we're just cousins mm -hmm. of bonobos and, and chimps, and um, you know, more than bonobo, I have. Chimp, but there's often some pink cloud somewhere that's not reacting properly and is uh, calm and serene in the face of danger, yeah. and they should be shrieking their head off. Um, it's so think in terms of you know, you're a very abnormal chimp, you've been domesticated, mm -hmm. you've been indoctrinated, you've been basically mm -hmm. you're under this delusion that you're separate, um, and yep. uh, you have a lot of so think of it more as getting well. So you have a lot of diseases <laughs> to get rid of and not, you know, basically laurels to achieve. Um, so it's it's the exact opposite of, of what people think. Um, be, people like to think that they're normal and they want to be super normal, but they're actually insane yeah. and they need to basically yes. you know, get rid of that insanity. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm 100% I'm with you on that, yeah. Well, well, how it translates to with, say, the phosphines and meditation is what the phosphines mm -hmm. are is uh, really you're doing exactly what you're doing with uh, any kind of psychedelic. So, you know, psilocybin or LSD or um, MDMA and all those kind of uh, things that mess with your serotonin, that's that's what mm -hmm. you're doing. So they they particularly attack the sciatic um, and the, the visual cortex. So they, uh, So what you're doing is you're basically doing an LSD trip without, you know, going to push it to get LSD. I always mm -hmm. say that you can't do LSD. So LSD is like tourism. If, if you want to know yep. what this is, psychotic break is like, just take some LSD. It will, it will badly hamper you, right? It, 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 it will show you what it's like and it'll immediately make it harder to achieve without LSD or any, any kind of crutch. Okay. Yeah. So you so what the LSD is doing is in fact dampening dampening down the very systems that create those neurotransmitters, mm -hmm. and so so in other words, it's uh, you know they they go on holiday if if you have LSD you know orally or something like that. Yeah. But the effect is what they you know all these scientists now are suddenly getting into studies in psychedelics. They're reviving it again after the fifties, and they're finding all these traumatic effects. Well. That's because they supplemental drugs. They don't know that you don't need to do do all these as supplemental drugs because apparently, under high stress and panic, usually at like near death, uh, we have things like DMT and things that kick in. Mm -hmm. And what those those things are doing is like wiring up your brain almost like an epileptic fit. Now, yeah. epileptics will have a kind of an aura which is is uh, you know such a pleasurable experience. It's such a overwhelming um kind of a feeling of ecstasy that uh, they would they would do anything to to have that um uh, but unfortunately the more epilepsy carries on it, it becomes more terminal but in essence yeah. you are playing with those same sort of circuits so what you're doing there is by practice giving yourself learning to give yourself your own um lsd trip or psychedelic trip now mm -hmm. You, I don't. Normally, you won't hear. Although, you know, any guru with his salt knows what I'm saying is true. You won't, they won't always admit it because you don't always want to be telling this to a novitiate or somebody that's on a spiritual path. Sure. Because a, people have very different ideas and opinions about psychedelics, and you know, you you get all these prejudices involved, and uh, people start. You know, putting an overlay of stuff that they're just ignorant about. So, mm -hmm. so they they don't want to label this. Um, uh, but the any guru will tell you you don't want to be doing psychedelics. You it'll take you five to seven years to to recover and get that out of your system, and then you'll be at square one. But if you under intensive training with somebody that knows what they're doing, it should only take about two years of you know full time work. Um, to to reach that psychotic break, um, yeah. uh, what it feels like at the end is like a full-on acid trip that just doesn't <laughs> doesn't go away. But it it 
well, it doesn't go away. I mean, it's not constant in the fact that you're not swooning around all the time in a pink cloud and you become, you know, the Buddha and people look at you and suddenly go, oh, there's something special about you. That yeah. happens, but it's not permanent and it's not a yeah. goal. It's, it's a big mistake to, to try and achieve that. Um, you, you're actually standing in the way of it happening while you try and push. Okay, so, 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 so like when you talk about... You yeah. So when, when you talk about that, that sort of process, so would you say that there's any point in pursuing some sort of path like that if you're not doing it as a sort of full time job or, you know, are there like if you don't attain the full acid trip thing, are there any reasons why someone would want to do that? I mean, for, for me, it's kind of a general question because you do have this kind of world of like virtuosic meditators, if you like or virtuosic people pursuing non-duality um, and if it's not a full-time job then okay what you've got is a sort of way of relaxing a little bit at the end of the day um, is there somewhere something in between or um yeah so yeah I, my thinking is changing on this i'm, I'm learning stuff um so well, you know when i was much younger then did the in the cult that I was in, and they did the, the fourth way or the way of the house order. So you did it in the normal working environment. It's at least 10 times harder mm -hmm. doing it that way. Um, and mm -hmm. you need the setup. You can't just do it by correspondence course. Though I am learning, I didn't think that any of this was possible on the internet, or I just didn't think. I thought you had to really be in person in the same room, getting you know, what's called darshan or presence and you know this involves you know the transfer of pheromones and stuff it's all it's very personal um and since learning that the, the possibilities on the inter internet and report you know digital divide and stuff is is a is a lot more possible than than i realized so i'm just oh of course yeah. all that. but yeah. um in terms of, so you're going to yeah. sort of, um, set up an inner circle of the cult to teach these things. Um, and... Yeah, as much as as much as people want. I'm not pushing, <laughs> but if people want, I'll take them there. But the you see, um, the way I kind of see it is like we're on the Titanic, um, but we're mm -hmm. in a different situation than anybody. Everybody's facing the cataclysm of their own death. Um, and that's always been sure. true for every human being. So we're not in any... I mean, the thing is facing your death isn't... It's it's sort of... Yeah, facing one's death in particular is, is almost a banal thing insofar as everyone does it. But so I think it's the kind of the, the catastrophic nature of a very drastic change in life that, first of all, is is more of a thing. So... I don't give a shit that I'm going to die. Uh, that's neither here nor there. I mean, well, I'm not. I'm not going to pretend that. Oh, I've, I've transcended any fear or apprehension about the, the process. Obviously, I'm uh, it's a fairly normal person. Um, but you know, it's just like, okay, well, that's that's already written in. So I'm going to die. I'm going to get cancer in 20 years and die. Or I'm going to get hit by a car next week and die, or whatever, anything in between. Uh, I'm going to die, you're going to die, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of boring in so far as I, I know that's going to happen. But uh, so so to me, it's more alarming the way uh, life, uh, being alive is possibly, and again, I sort of lean towards, you know, uh, and again, this is one of the reasons I like this narrative of the flippening, because I, I lean towards a sense of impending catastrophe. It's built into me. I believe it's epigenetic as well, but I mean, it, it's built into my uh whatever whatever i am is built in to expect a catastrophe is going to happen and i've been expecting this catastrophe all my life i've been trained to expect it in some way and so it's the life uh coming up to and maybe beyond the catastrophe that is much more interesting to me to explore and i think something that the uh the extinctionati uh, uh might be to offering or doing or being is something that's more about um, uh, how how to deal with or something about a catastrophe that's going to happen and being alive, not dead. Being dead is easy. 
Well, it's, uh, for all I know, anyway. Yeah, it's, you know, there's, there's always been a catastrophe looming over us, and that's, yeah. you know, our death. <laughs> um, so uh, what what's good about... Um, yeah, but we don't have to do anything is, once we're dead, though, do we? I, I don't have to do anything yeah. once I'm dead. That's easy. But after the flipping, I might have to hunt rabbits or somehow whatever it is, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah. you, have the, you always have the option to top yourself, but that's not a good, good sure. way to go because um, oh. there's so much that you'd leave on the table. <laughs> so to me, yeah. it seems obvious, is the, is you, you know, um, it would be a real shame not to achieve enlightenment. It's kind of like going to Disneyland or something and not doing the rides, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. or not doing Space Mountain or the best ride, or yeah, you know, I mean, it's kind of like it's like uh, life half lived to me. So, yeah. it's, so, um, it's for most people, okay. they don't really have it. Uh, you know, if they're on the Titanic, they think, well, you know, they, they've got a simplistic view. Is we'll go, you know, you should pick your cabin, you can be in Jim Bendel's cabin, you can drink the Kool Aid, you can go and mm -hmm. sing. Kumbaya, you can be in the party cabin and party till you drop. You've got an infinite variety. Mm. But you know, the wise people generally, you know, there, there are a million ways to be stupid. But, you know, it's like families, you know, fa fa families are dysfunctional in various ways. Mm. But functional families are functional in much the same way. And in the same way, wise people will tell you how to be. <laughs> and that's basically philosophy you know, today if you don't um you know, achieve some kind of status as a philosopher or some kind of physical uh, or philo philosophical understanding of the world uh, the lights will go out with you not really comprehending what the show is all about so it's kind yeah. of like not understanding the language of the play or not understanding the plot or something mm. and it's kind of like well you were there, you saw the lights and you saw the action, but you didn't understand the words and it all passed over your head and then it's all over and you didn't really get much out of is it. That, is that Macchio, though, as well? What's that? Is, is that Macchio, though? Because, like, if we're chimps or bonobos, do you think there are bonobos that achieve a, a, a sense of intellectual understanding of what the, the life was about before they snuff it? Or is that another sort of delusional <laughs> state? Or is that just your... You know. I, I think they do. I mean, I've seen I've seen videos of um, you know this kind of gorilla king or something, and uh, he has he has. I mean, you you have a look at those guys. <clears throat> um, they, he's doing King Lear. Uh, I saw <laughs> one thing where he's sitting he's sitting up in the you know on the mountain in, in the Congo, and his whole <clears throat> he's been the head of you know this king of the troop, and he's been challenged by. Uh, these, these, uh, another, another subordinate male, and and all his entourage, and it's pure Shakespeare. Eventually, you know, they have this big set too, um, mm -hmm. not violent, and funny enough, it's just a big psychological drama, a big psychodrama. And eventually, he's deposed completely non-violently, and he goes off into the jungles of the Congo, and he takes his lieutenants, about seven lieutenants that supported him. Yeah. And the upstart takes over. But, you know, while this rivalry is going on, they show you him sitting there watching the sunset. And you can see that, you know, it's his final thing before he gives up. And he, you can see he's he's saying, he's thinking, you're like, what the fuck is that all about? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think, you know, I think that we have a misunderstanding that, you know, all the intensity of feeling and all, all of the emotions we have are, are cerebral upfront and kind of a later adaptation, something, you know, again, consciousness is some kind of achievement. And I think yeah. it's the opposite. We're actually losing touch with consciousness. I, I think yeah, that I those you. apes yeah. and gorillas have much more of an intense experience of Shakespeare. They, they're living and writing Shakespeare in, in, their, in their daily lives. Yeah, because we've just got layers and layers and layers of bullshit that well, includes we've, we've everything. dampened it down. We've dampened it down. I mean, people like watching EastEnders and all these soaps and stuff because they're trying to get in in touch with uh, with all the you know the the primate brains and stuff. But I mean, tri primates wouldn't watch EastEnders because they're living it. 
And, you know, it's it's yeah. it's, it's a hankering <laughs> after loss that we we do all these things. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I believe that chimps uh, get enlightened. You know, especially it's, it's we, we're struggling more and more. I mean, I, I assume that, that yeah, chimps, chimps are more. Uh, yeah, chimp chimps. Uh, I, I would guess, uh, and again, it's impossible to know because the whole issue I've had with this whole. Uh, uh, stuff about enlightenment is, is they always say, well, you know, you can't really describe it, which I'm sure is true, but then you've got to sort of commit yourself because I thought, oh, I'm really interested. I'd like to know what this is all about. But then obviously, again, you have to get into that thing where you very, very dedicate yourself to a path of, you know, trying to get yourself to a state of being that you don't really know what it is. Uh, anyway, and yeah, I, I just, I, I take it that like a chimp would be uh, already much closer to that state than I am. So I have to peel away uh, uh, many more layers to, to get to where the chimp is. And if the chimp needs to still do some work on themselves, then, uh, you know, they're, they're a lot closer to it than I am. But so, um, so I mean, in, in, so really, like if I was to say, I don't know what uh, should, I, again, okay, being personal, um, would would you sort of recommend whatever? I mean, I'm not, I'm, I don't have a focused meditation practice at the moment, but let's say I was saying, right, okay, in the spiritual supermarket, I've got this, this, and this on the shelf. Um, would you be sort of suggesting, um, so the phosphine idea, because I'm curious about, because I've, I've, you know, been trying to get back into a sort of routine. I used to meditate for like an hour a day, which again is like Mickey Mouse stuff. But, um, and, and so it's quite hard for me to sort of find the time. And I did go a bit mental um, at the time and I had all these experiences that were, uh, which again, you know, most um, uh, uh, teachers or whatever say, you know, you may experience these strange um, uh, phenomena, but don't, don't take it too seriously because it's all just, you know, part of the illusion and blah, blah, blah. And that's not really, you know, it's interesting, but, you know, don't get too into it. But anyway, so if I said, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to want to get back into a practice and I'm going to do meta or I'm going to do like mindfulness on the breath or something, something, um, would, would you sort of recommend the, the phosphine option? And I think I've, I've communicated with you about this, you know, I haven't seen anything, you know, but so basically it looks to me like, okay, I would go through my, um, regular sort of 15 minute sort of calming, settling down little process. And then I'm going to sit and and watch my phosphines or look for them or, you know, try and evolve that process. Is that, is that, is that, would that be your prescription for a, like a meditative practice? Yeah, it's because it cuts to the chase, but anything's yeah. better than nothing. You know, all these, the, the stuff that these guys are selling like mindfulness and that they're not bad at all. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, the thing is, is if you're shopping for techniques, um, there are a lot of people that just uh, part of consumer culture and they shop around and you know, fads and stuff like that. But um, yeah. that's a big mistake. Cool. That's part of the way I uh, described it is your alien cortex is trying to protect itself by diverting, diverting you. So it says, hey, try this, try yeah. that. <laughs> okay, and, yeah, yeah, no, okay. You need so, one so, technique so. that you mine very, very deep. So you get yeah, one technique so it doesn't... and go very, very so let deep me... on it. I would like to, yeah. So it'd be kind, yeah, it'd be interesting. Okay, so uh, yeah, I, I I want to interject just because I very much relate to to what you're saying in terms of this. You know, there's too many chocolates on the shelf in the supermarket, or too many tins of beans. You know, and so everything is is this sort of consumerist thing. And consumer even I, choice, I yeah, consumer choice. Yeah, and I kind of choice. remove myself to that in some some ways a lot more than other people. And at the same time, I realise I'm I'm as heavily into it as anyone. So, yeah, okay, it's kind of, that, that, that's that's interesting. I mean, I followed a certain guide. I'll send it uh, to you at some point because it might be interesting to see what your reflection is. And I, I developed a sort of evolved a technique, but basically there's, there's um, the uh, techniques I'm familiar with are basically mantra, meditation, uh, which again, I know that there are lots of layers of, of what this is. So uh, my understanding is very simple, but basically you're, uh, going to focus on some sort of object and try and bring yourself back to a focus on that. So that could be breathing or saying om or some flowers or slarty bark fast over and over again and keep your attention on that. So that was one type of meditation that I did. 
And then um, the other one was what I, I ended up calling the radio is broken, where you just sort of sit there and let the mind go blah, 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 and don't attach too much to any of it. So I'm not necessarily trying to focus on anything. I'm trying to just let, let everything, like when you've got radio four on in the background. Um, and then the other, um, the other uh, element was, if a feeling comes up is to allow yourself to focus on that feeling. And I did those three different things in a session and um, it ended up the, the, uh, in sort of a morbid fascination on that third part where I'd, where I'd uh, end up sitting with very uh, morbid feelings that would come up, which actually- Yeah, yeah, was... I wouldn't do that one. Don't focus on the feelings, let the feelings drop. So, yeah, was... okay, so, so in general, right, so, uh, a lot of people think, well, you get a mantra and then you meditate on, on it and it's a magic spell. And if you say it in, you know, no. enough times, magic will happen. It's yeah, not no. like that. It's what, just to focus what, the mind. It is. So, what, so all you're doing is you're doing like reps, like in a gym with a muscle. And mm -hmm. what the reps are is when your attention goes off the mantra or whatever, the phosphines or whatever you're doing, uh, you, you then, with an effort of will, bring it back again. And that's one mm -hmm. rep. So if, yeah. if, you, if you're kind of holding your attention steady like that, that's like being on a bar, pulling up yeah. like on that bar and hanging on the bar and, <laughs> until you're shaking. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's basically let the, your attention go and come back. So it's, it's the yeah. pulling it back. It's the strengthening of body is what they call it. But anyway, that's like strengthened like a muscle. So it's, yes. uh, people think that it's all about, you know, the mantra. It's not. It's about pulling your attention yeah. back. Yeah. so that you get used to holding your attention um and people are not totally people yeah. attention just drifts in like 30 you know 30 seconds two seconds yeah you know yeah. i mean three words and people are already off on a different path. oh like doing a zen sort of like counting from 10 down to one with the breath yeah. um like if i if i'm not practicing regularly if i if i can count like three numbers before my mind wanders it's a fucking miracle and uh yeah. Yeah, so but, but you see, it doesn't. You see, people then think, "Oh, I mustn't let my mind wander." No, yeah. no, you must. It's fine. You, it's pulling it back. That's the rep. That's the muscle yes. action. So it's yeah. pulling it back, pulling it back, and eventually, you you can you know you can hold much longer on the bar, and that's the the thing. But um, yeah, I uh, I the, the breathing and focusing on the feelings and emotions you have, I don't like those. Um, the reason yeah. is. They're a little bit too captivating and you can get into a feedback, especially with breathing. You start, you know, messing with your concentrating on your breathing. You start messing with it and messing yes. with it. You, you will send yourself into a pocket and all sorts of you'll get effects that are not the effects of what we're trying to achieve. They're just effects of a side effects of oxygen starvation or um, too, or hyperventilation, too much oxygen, but they gimmicks. Mm -hmm. So a lot of yeah. uh, the people that if, if people teach you anything about breath, you can take it as, as read that they're charlatans because the, the breath is a cheap trick to get people to think that they're experiencing altered states. They are experiencing okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like hypoxia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not what that. you're yeah, trying yeah. to achieve. So you're not, yeah. in a, you're, not, you're not using serotonin or DMT or any, any other neurotransmitter. You're not developing that. Okay. You're just demanding a cheap trick. And the same as applies with emotions is that yeah, people, are, you know, people are a mess when it comes to emotions. They're all complicated goulash of nonsense and impediments. Yeah. So yeah. You know, already most people are in some kind of neuroses or stuck on some thing or, or not stuck enough and have ADD and stuff. So, you know, it's terrible. It's like catching birds. You just complete I mean, squirrel. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, you know, the, like, um, don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. No, the idea that, uh, as I understood it, was to, to basically just uh, practice a little bit, um, allowing something strong to come up that's not going to, like, send you off the rails, um, which did send me off the rails. Um, but it was kind of interesting anyway. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I definitely learned something from it. But okay, so uh, would well, there be well, just one thing there? There, there, there is mm -hmm. there is a different technique, which is the practice of reflection. So mm -hmm. uh, and that you know it goes all the way from Jung's active dreaming to just you know, um, 
uh, epistemological um, kind of uh, reflection, so that you're reflecting on a text or trying to understand a phenomena or trying to understand uh, some wisdom or solve some problem in, in philosophy or something. All of those kind of meditations are, are really what you call reflection. And then those, mm -hmm. um, then you do that. You let those things ar arise. You think about them and you kind of noodle yeah. on the problem of, you know, kind of Socratic things. Now, that that's yeah. different. That's not meditation. So they, uh, people will confuse those two to their detriment. Yeah. Yeah, no, the thing I was doing was very much just letting, you know, just sitting, letting the um, something come up. And if it was a negative thing, not, not, uh, but yeah, just sitting with it, i.e. not trying to ignore it or let it flow by, not releasing it, but just um, actually sitting with it going, okay, this is uncomfortable and unpleasant. And uh, I'm going to sit with it. So but again, with the, uh, the. Yeah, I would say just observe it and then acknowledge yeah. it and let it go. Yeah, and, and move on. Yeah. So, um, okay. So, I yeah. Uh, again, if if you're interested, I mean, I I would like to sort of uh, sort of go more into this topic, or maybe with the the group in general, if people are interested, whether we could have a, a broader conversation, because I think it's interesting. Uh, I, I like I say, I'd really like to sort of get myself into a, a daily habit again, which I'm working on. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't mind also then sort of touching on um, the within the group. And, and again, you know, maybe um, I have I, I've got a sort of reticence when I can participate in group meetings. I feel uh, un, yeah, I, I don't know what I feel exactly, but in terms of like getting involved in the conversations a bit more, I'd like to. But I, I still feel a sort of weariness about it. But um, I, again, within the, the context of um, Sort of broader conversation. I am interested in. Um, somebody talked about the sort of hospice element um, of what a group like this might be about. Because I can't quite, you know. So, uh, so again, there's this whole thing of okay. There's this uh, flippening idea, which again, since I read your book, is just like uh, it was was like a gobsmacking idea that it sounds, you know, plausible. And, and again, I don't know. I don't have the sort of intellectual chops or, or maybe I just don't have the patience to now go away and read, read nine million scientific pay, papers but I get the thing about that the fucking annoying bloke with his um uh what's his name Veritas Veritasium or whatever the advertising guy but but he does that video with the uh wing nuts and I, I get that idea right and it, it sounds plausible so I basically uh, without claim, going to get a PhD on the subject, I, I, I can buy that idea. The ice is going to melt, it's going to make the earth wobbly, and eventually it's going to do a, a flip and blah, blah, blah. Okay, and that might happen next week, and it might happen in 10 years or whatever, but I don't really know, so blah, blah, blah. But okay, I'm, what I'm saying is I'm, I'm going to hold that idea as a, a realistic thing. And then, uh, again, uh, to then assess what kind of a shit show is going to occur after that. Okay, uh, again, I'll, I'm, I'll take whatever you're saying about that as realistic enough. And then you're going, right now, let's tell everybody that this is going to happen and go and fly around. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, particularly, I've got to be in my bonnet about flying. And um, there's, because it's the most, it's just this like absolutely most fuck you ish thing. Um, anybody could do when you consider like all those like 80% of the Bangladeshis in the world who you know don't have the option of going on holiday or whatever while they're uh, dismantling uh, a disused oil tanker or whatever and uh, you know the, the fact that it, it's something that consumes so much just for the sort of narcissistic thrill of being able to sunbathe but um, I'll, I'll, just to throw that out there but anyway but, but you know there's this the, the thing is like, okay, here's our, our focus is on this is going to happen. The fucking Greenland ice sheet is done for. We've known about this for 20 years, which again, it doesn't uh, surprise me. I've, I've been following these stories, but it's the more, more you More than about. 20 years, more than since the 80s. It, yeah, I remember, I remember <laughs> it's, it's reading about it. It's been 20 the years that it's, it's actually been past the tipping point. So it's been 20 yeah. years that we couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds, you know, and, and it's, it's like uh, I've, I read about the, all the environment shit when I was a kid, so that was in the 80s, and uh, I, I thought it was all a fucking, sounded like a terrible disaster at that time, and I've, I've been dealing with a sort of 
feeling of like this um, schizo existence where you think, oh, wait a minute, but you know, and back in the day, it was like Greenpeace or whatever, and you'd, you'd read this stuff about you know carbon dioxide, blah, 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 and you go, all right, of course that's true. And then you go to say to somebody, oh, uh, so uh, are they doing anything about this, blah, 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 and, and you go through this like insane process. And then you, 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 and again, I grew up with this whole Hitler shit all the time. So uh, to me, everything is like an analogy to, oh yeah, it's, you know, the Holocaust is around the corner. Oh, it's Kristallnacht. Oh, it's the Gestapo knocking on your door, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it's, oh yeah, don't worry, everything will be all right. Oh yeah, the, you know, that, that will never happen. No, oh, this is not, you know, this is the same phenomenon happening. So I've been sort of uh, um, uh, mentally kind of, programmed into this uh, way of thinking that this is always around the corner so so for me to accept that the environmental catastrophe is is real is very very easy and then to go through this sort of mental uh, gymnastics that that people do to pretend that nothing is happening and blah 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 uh, and so now we're going to go oh i'm going to um uh, i'm going to uh, charge the sigil and we're going to go oh it's the flippening the flippening and and whatever it is and just maybe just have a laugh i don't know just telling people there's a flippening uh, if uh, anybody wants to listen but then when someone yeah. comes to us and goes okay yeah the flippening the flippening and now what like what's what's our purpose then in that but between us as a group which again i don't feel like i'm i kind of know all the people but i've had some direct contact with some members of the group and and it's like okay well what what do we do between us about this um we're going to have a bit of a laugh and do a bit of light uh, um you know ramsey jukes uh chaos magic sort of thing or that's the way it comes to me and um so is this yeah and then okay there's this whole ARG A A A thing that i uh, is not i uh, um i didn't quite understand it because i don't really know about those things but uh, now it's like yeah uh, am i making am i asking a question <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, okay. So, let me answer it. So, yeah. I, I, in terms of what we do, I think we must work it out for for ourselves. So, I, I just, you see, I just changed my thinking. So, what I was, I was thinking was, it's almost impossible to tell people <laughs> about the the Earth the, um, because they just don't believe you. It's just too outlandish. Everybody's been inoculated against you know strangeness. If anybody tells you anything unusual, you or they're dangerous people and you shouldn't believe them. Yeah. So there's a mass of normalization and this bias towards decatastrophizing and stuff. It's very part and parcel of our progressive narrative that nothing bad ever happens, even though if you just look back in the geological or the historical record, it's just bad shit and catastrophe <laughs> one after another. So the idea that suddenly it's all suddenly smooth sailing when we're just about to hit a Malthusian catastrophe is just crazy. So for that point of view, you want to tell people like, you know, maybe you should get over your delusion that the ship isn't going to sink because, uh, you know, basically you can have a look from a million angles. You know, this Titanic is going to sink. So you stop wasting time, you know, running around thinking, you know, how do we save it? See, if you're shopping for catastrophes, the flippening is, is a very good one because there's nothing you can do about it. You see, if you, if, uh, you take the current catastrophe of the day, which is um, collapse, environmental and um, ecological collapse, which is certainly coming. I mean, it's unavoidable. Only the, the worst of the transhumanists and uh, Trump cult, I mean, the Elon Musk cult think that uh, uh, catastrophe isn't going to come around. It's just the Pinkers and the Yuval Hararis and stuff, just the deluded nuts that think, you know, oh, we all go to the stars. It's just it's just completely nutty. Um, so, so yeah, we're heading for a Malthusian catastrophe. Uh, we have the limits to growth, and that's pretty obvious to anybody with a brain. So, there, you see, the problem is now, if you say that's your catastrophe de jeu, uh, people think they can play chess and get out of it. So they're wasting time. They're, you see, the the Cognoscenti have done the calculations. The crew, uh, the captain of the Titanic, have done the fucking calculations, and they they know that you cannot bail the ship. So they say they, the ship is going down. They know it for a fact. They're not sharing that fact, and very few of the people that can do maths and do back of the envelope calculations to say see how fast the water is coming in will tell you that the ship is lost. 
But in general, it's a big secret. And so we're in this kind of twilight zone where everybody is in this delusion saying, oh, well, the ship's been holed, um, but we can bail it out and we can do this. And we can sound like, guys, you're wasting time. You better come to the conclusion that this ship is going down and then get realistic. What you do then becomes strange because once you know there's absolutely no hope, well, I think that you could survive it. I mean, humans have survived uh, yeah. <laughs> so this, this catastrophe of the flipping. They've uh, survived collapses of all sorts. So it is survivable for a very few number of people. So I think it's worth, you know, I, on, I'm just speaking personally. If I was on the Titanic, I would work my butt off <laughs> to try and survive it. Um, and get a lot of meaning out of that uh, as well. So I think it's meaningful. And and then on top of that, <clears throat> you want to uh, get out of all these delusions. So all the spiritual work is is just detox from the delusions. We're just chock full of delusions in, in our society. Um, and all those de delusions have amounted to catastrophe. You know, this industrial civilization is the net result of our delusions. So the very least you can do is just get sane. I mean, I just for fuck's sake, don't you owe it to yourself to just get sane in the last few moments of this house burning down? Or <laughs> to confuse the analogy? But I mean, to, sorry to mix the analogy, but I mean, if, if you're on the Titanic uh, and it's it's not an iceberg you hit, you you know, people knocked holes in the fucking hull by way of analogy. That, that's why we're sinking. We're on planet, you know, spaceship Earth with people knocking holes in the hull. So it's it's those nuts. And you think like, well, should we, shouldn't we at least just, just see what it's like being sane for a few seconds before the water closes over our heads? I think that's a fair, a fair uh, goal for insane people. Um, so the very first thing is to realize that you're insane. You're absolutely barking mad. And it's it's taking a lot of time because people are not sitting down and looking at what they're doing, i.e. bashing holes in the hull of our lifeboat, because they, they're thinking, you know, they're, they're solutions. It's a problem that we can fix. And so I boil it down to this part of your brain. It's your intellect. It's your frontal lobes. It's your, what I call your alien cortex. It's playing chess, and it caused the Industrial Revolution for exactly the same thing, problem solving. Sees everything as a problem, does a solution, and it's the anti midas touch. It just gets worse. So it, the madness is in the alien cortex. The alien cortex is the seat of our ego. And so and just saying, like, surely it's a worthy goal that this demon in our head has destroyed us. It, wouldn't it be nice to just take the demon out, kill it, and uh, see what it's like without it? You know, just, just, just experience the bliss for a few moments before the Titanic goes down, if you can't actually survive. But either way, you want to get rid of the demon and then, you know, experience what it's like being sane and then try and live through the catastrophe. Seems obvious to me. Um, but uh, yeah, if, if you harp on about societal collapse, uh, I think the, every, nobody's engaged because the denial, there's just too much possibility for denial. Um, the The... I would prefer to see the, the flipping income because it's it would cut short all the, the lunacy that would stop us um, or even a few people surviving. You see, as, as time goes on, the more idiotic people are and the, there's, there's incredible dangers in the collapse of, of society. I mean, people, you know, nutcases with the you know, red button and stuff that they can hit. And, and you're talking about concentration camps and the Gestapo. They're already knocking on the door in fucking Australia and Austria. In fucking Austria, they fucking, <laughs> it's Kristallnacht this weekend in Austria. So it's like, you know, but nobody can see it because they have their head up their ass. And I think it's like, it's unfortunate because it's, you know, saying like, this ship is going down, dudes. And, uh, you, you know, you, you're not getting your money's worth if you <laughs> if you don't admit that to yourself and start uh, doing something reasonable and worthwhile in terms of life. And I think that's you know to try and get some philosophical attainment, like uh, get rid of your delusions, <laughs> is a worthy goal. So that that's my my philosophy. But um, yeah, I, I think we should just work through it as a group. 
Um, but I, I always thought you should just keep it as a secret knowledge. And then, uh, you know, you can, in the form of a cult, anybody will take anything on board. So you, that, if you want cultural change or you want to transmit a very difficult idea like the flippening to people, you can do it easily in a cult. So I thought it was first, first build up a cult and then, you know, pass the information on as secret knowledge. But now I'm thinking, yeah, we're running out of time. Now I think just like Hail Mary pass, just just put it out there and have it like, you know, the flat earthers or something. Just, yeah, just you're going to get ridiculed and call a doomsday set and stuff. And so like, yeah, okay, but some people are going to go, hang on a minute. I was thinking something kind of similar. And then, uh, yeah, then you kind of, I think that's the best service you can do to people on the Titanic, you know, doomed people. So does that make any sense? I'll answer it. Oops, did I lose you, Bob? Can you still hear me? Are you there, Bob? Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. Hello? Oh, are we there? Uh, I, I, I can't hear you. I don't know what happened to my microphone. That's like, oh, oh, there you go. On. You're on. Hello. You're Can you hear me now? Good. Yeah, yeah. One, two. Okay, yeah. And my my mic just decided to uh, take a rest. Um, so yeah, okay. So so yeah, because I, I was trying to um, uh, say something there. Yeah. So um, basically, um, I I kind of yeah. You make total sense, really. I think I I I feel like what I thought I understood, I probably understand, and what. Um, yeah, now I've lost my thread because of the technology. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, I, I mean, what, okay, what, what, what I, my, my brain, and this is where, where you talk about the whole Kronos, Kairos thing. I'm sort of, um, at the same time, I, I go, oh, yeah, you know, we should embrace chaos and all of these ideas, but I'm actually very, you know, tending to um, the, the Kronos, whatever the, you know, the intellectual overthinking sort of modality of things. And so I sort of uh, think, oh, yeah, okay, how do I, um, uh, categorize and define to myself what this whole pursuit is about. And, you know, one of the things is um, that, again, to me, is, I, don't, I don't know if I want to say a barrier or whatever, but there, there is this kind of issue of everything, all the, the group conversations that uh, are being carried out in public. And I can see the benefit of like having a door open for people because you know you've opened this door for me, right? Not just you, but the the all the other participants have kind of opened a door for me to come. You know, I watched your video series, you know, which is quite long. I, I think I've watched most of it more than once. I'm ashamed to say, and um, you know, there's, there's there is a sort of invitation there to people to say, hey, you know, come in and and have an interact about these subjects. And there's the thing of like, okay what do I uh, understand about what's going on in the world? And then how do I respond to that as an individual on one hand? Um, and then um, there's this thing though of, of like, um, uh, I don't know, there's there's a kind of a where to interact with the group in a non-public way, because it feels to me if, if all the group interaction, and I know there's like, you know, there are those uh, avenues for interaction, but they're not sort of that active in a way. And so, so I feel like, you know, as a group, we're opening a door, we're saying, hello, you know, if you want to get into this story about the flippening or whatever, but you know, there, there isn't, there's very coherent narrative actually. And there is a sort of proposal for what you're saying. These are some, some responses that you can have. And, you know, the idea of maybe having a manifesto and, you know, having a logo and a sigil kind of thing and, you know, kind of cohering around something makes sense. And then there's like people might come and say, hello, you know, in the same way that I'm doing it. Hi, I'd like to interact with this or with the people as individuals and as a group and to learn more about it and maybe to figure out then what the fuck really, what am I taking on by accepting this idea? Um yeah, so uh, yeah, so I, I I sort of think about that quite a lot in terms of is is there are there ways for the existing group to maybe have a conversation that isn't necessarily going to be broadcast, or what's you know what's the thinking behind? I mean, 
again, I understand we, we want to create content and there's, I, I like the idea of transparency. I think what you describe as being an anarchist is, is very similar to what I understand as anarchism. Um, and, you know, again, I think sort of a, on a political level, if that means something or philosophical level, there's a sort of common understanding between the people participating as far as I can tell. Um, and again, I'm not sure, I'm not, I, I don't know quite what my question is, but yeah, I, I sort of think, okay, there's this extinction arty sort of thing, and uh, it's going to have maybe try and consolidate what it's about, and there's a whole bunch of people involved. And so I guess in, in one way, I, I feel like it'd be quite nice to have a little cocktail party where we could all say hello to each other, um, but it's not necessarily a public event, I guess. Uh, if everybody wants to do that, and like, I guess what what's the? Well, I don't know. I'm lost, Hugh. Uh, no, no. I think you, yes, you're expressing something that's that's really valuable. So, yeah, I I think that people should meet offline, and um, you know, just it's all about find the others. Mm -hmm. So you know, if find people within the group that are like-minded and are interested in the same thing but i think it'd be really nice if if you took uh the ball and led things like a meditation group and yeah. stuff like that um i feel for my part that i have to be sort of public and try and develop the whole thing and basically present it in order to a wider audience i'm, I'm mm -hmm. trying to get rid of that job um i haven't yeah. you know, <laughs> on faulty and stuff and i, I still yeah. will try it after the, after the manifesto yeah. but i don't think he's gonna he's no. not gonna bite you off the track no. he's on. so um yeah i i mean uh it's not the, the the job that i choose but i feel i you know i have to do it unless somebody else is gonna do it yeah so you've kind of lumbered it. yourself with it haven't you yeah so i i i feel kind of set in a role um which I will try heartily to get rid of if I can't. But if uh, if not, I just will push on in this in this mode. I think if we do a manifesto, um, the point of a manifesto is to iron all these things out. Uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, inconsistencies in in my thinking that people have pointed out. You know, like you know, why do five hundred lone wolves? Why do accelerations? Why you know? Why do green austerity? You know, like you were saying about planes is like you know why not fly a plane if the, if the flipping is about to happen and i think we must get all of those questions ironed out because i am yeah. not consistent in my own thinking so i mean we, you can't be if, you're, if you're genuinely thinking then consistency is sort of impossible um but i i think that um yeah maybe the yeah a forum for kind of uh, being able to raise these sort of cogitations and and maybe look for clarity even while uh, realizing that it might not be possible. Because I mean, like, like, I, again, it's, it, there's there's a couple of things that like do my head in, and flying is one of them. It does my head in, and like yeah, I, me too, and I me too. have this like I ideological. And, but I I have to recognize it's ideological. And actually, when you say, "Oh yeah, fuck it," and and uh, you know, yeah, well, we're, you know, let's melt the I, I, uh, Iceland green sheet. Uh, uh, ice sheet as soon green no where am i going not iceland green sheet the greenland <laughs> fucking ice sheet let's melt the fucker you know let's get on with it I, i'm yeah, totally yeah, yeah, with that but at the same time it's like okay but at the same time okay i know some guy's gonna screw the cyclone b into the the gas feeding mechanism but i still don't want to be that guy uh so yeah, i don't know but, I'm, I'm afraid uh, everything is going to be sort of nazi related on my side but uh, <laughs> uh yeah, no, it's a good caution. I see what what my you see where well, one of my foibles is that I've uh, a hanker after some kind of you know um, an anarchist utopia in the end times, mm -hmm. and I think you know I've got to get let that idea go because it's not go, it's not one of the things that's likely to happen. It's, but but I mean, I'll I'll settle for an anarchist utopia that's just. You know, us guys <laughs> yeah. distributed around the world, and it's digital, and it's not quite what I had in mind. But yeah. I mean, I I like the idea of a you know fleet of anarchist pirates for the end time. I think it would be real fun. But yeah, I mean, I mean it, and and that's sort of that that is a thing that could materialize and could lead to at least. I mean, because the the anarchists in Barcelona were uh, uh, sort of initiated and made that happen at the beginning of an apocalyptic 
event anyway, so they weren't going to last. Um, but it was still worth it, I suppose. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, after reading, you know, homage to Catalonia and stuff, it was like, well, the world have to end. I want to see that before I go. Yeah. You know, so, um, but uh, I think, or, you know, it's uh, what I've been doing uh, so far is just too small. So mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of impoverished in terms of possibilities. And if we just, you know, loosen up, um, involve a bit of money and expand the thing and make more of a thing about it. There'll be more options for us to do. And it's it's really ripe because doomerism is so dead. <laughs> it's, so, it's so boring. It's so stuck in a right. It's so fucking stale. And so is yeah. green activism and, and anarchism. Yeah. Anarchism is fucking atrocious. And, and so everything is like... Yeah, you but know, I, okay, but it's, it's the acceleration of like, like we yeah. don't need to do that. We could be the joyous doomers, you know. So yeah. like, this is all ending yeah. and it's fucking A, you know. It's like mm -hmm. it's accelerated and trying yeah, yeah. I think that's cool, a cool way to, to think. And I think it's a breath of fresh air. So the whole world needs a breath of fresh air. So I think we could make a little bit of traction at least. We could be as as big as some sect. If, you know, we don't have to big, be as big as the Elon Musk. You know, cult. Um, oh, yeah. I a, a nice jolly little cult wouldn't hurt anybody at this stage. No, it's yeah, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, um, I guess yeah, I guess the thing is where yeah, you want to. Uh, it's it's very yeah because the 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 um I don't know what the reference I'm 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 some, somewhat reticent to re reference Reddit as any representation of uh, humanity at large and I think you like me probably spend a bit too much time uh, looking at Reddit and and whatever but I mean because the the yeah the the whole my sense of like what what was anarchism it's just gone fucking crazy like the the people. Who are sort of left and the blah 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 this um um this thing now where all that matters is what your view is on trans people um which again you know good luck if, if, good luck yeah yeah but, but i mean the thing is that it's a it's a meaning that's all completely trivial and it's not important you know please if you want to be a girl that's fine i don't care that's fine be good good luck to you go to the loo wherever you like i'm just i'm i'm all for those i i, I won't talk about the Get into the technological issue because I think that gets more complicated. But uh, you know, it's just it's not an issue as far as I'm concerned. You know, good luck to you. Whatever you want to do, I think you should be free. I'm an anarchist, so I think if you want to go around and say call me Mary, call me Loretta, whatever, um, you know, all of that. Um, but it's just it doesn't really. Are we going but to don't get, get fash about it because everybody starts getting fashion totalitarian yeah. and it's like yeah. you know if if, if no, but it's also this photo, that it's the issue chambers for you and it's like hey, yeah. that's not anarchist dude I know but no but it's the fact that one way or another the fact that that's become the most important uh, litmus test of anything is just a bit nuts but I think this is all because of of agitation and and like head fuckery that's being. Um, Sort of encouraged or whatever. So I, I just don't know. And and the whole thing about you know Antifa in the states and even in England, it's a thing, where you know I I would have had some sort of affinity for not that I would you know I'm too sensible to get involved in anything like that. But I've got a kind of affinity for the contingent of people who are going to get angry enough to go around smashing windows and so on. Um, uh, I'm not with Chris Hedges on that necessarily, but. Um, you know, it's just that they again. They're, they're, it's just become this insane thing where I think that it's all undercover police basically doing this stuff now, and you know everything's so nuts and undermined. And, and the idea of like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And so the idea, you know, anarchism is this thing where everybody jointly decides what to do with the resources uh, so that everybody has enough. Blah blah blah. So it's a very simple idea, and um, uh, that's just gone. You know, it's gone. And like the, the left. I mean, in England, you have the you had this left of like socialist workers' parties, people handing out newspapers at demonstrations and stuff, and they were it was like watching the young ones kind of thing, sort of crusties and stuff. But there was a sort of element of like really heroic people who were like involved in the road protest movement back in the day that I think were like proper, you know, decent anarchists or whatever, or, you know, had some sort of philosophy. Um, but yeah, so so what I think of as like normal anarchism, um, yeah, it doesn't doesn't exist. 
uh, as far as I can see. And, and I think it's just because social um, forces have like eradicated and destroyed these things. And like the Labour Party loss of the, the last election with Corbyn was the sort of like the death of that where the, the, the signal in the UK is that basically you say anything we don't like, you're an anti-Semite and we're going to get you. And that's it. And, and so everybody's been basically turned into a, like a caricature of an anarchist or a leftist even, um, or they're basically just Tory fuckers. And um, yeah, so so like even just to bring to, to bring the idea of anarchism into this thing and just say, okay, you know, here's here's you know something we've got something to offer or you know, I don't know. You see, what what's what I've found is that everybody is an anarchist at heart. And I, nobody well, disagrees with anarchist principles. But yeah. once you stick a label on it, then people have plenty to disagree with. So yeah. so what what I found is if you just barrel ahead and don't call it anarchism, everybody mm -hmm. thinks, hey, yeah, then this is this is right thinking. <laughs> and you say, yeah. yeah, just don't label it, because <laughs> otherwise the next thing you know, you know, you'll be Antifa and you'll be you know, you know, doing witch hunts again, transphobia, and all very un-anarchist things. Yeah. But I think that anarchism is the the old school guys, the guys from the seventies, and those kind of idealists. Um, they they are out of touch now. The the guys that mm -hmm. that I I talk to, they 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 kind of got beaten down and defeated by Thatcherism and Reagan and mm -hmm. and um, yeah, they they kind of um, their view. Of anarchism is kind of archaic now. It doesn't mm -hmm. you know, have the realities of social media and the fact that all the kids are distracted. And this is a completely different world to the yeah. to the anarchism of the eighties or something. So, so all all of those guys are incre increasingly out of touch and saying things that are making my hair stand on end. <laughs> it sounds a bit bit like the Columbine shooters manifesto. So, I I think yeah. they really have lost lost their way. I mean. I, I know guys that are, you know, take they, they turned liberal in a way. They take they taking the jab, um, and and because you know it's the right thing to do from the goody two shoes liberal civil oh, responsibility. Yeah. No, but I mean this, that's this, not anarchism. Yeah. You're supposed to reject it not because of you know what does it work or does it not or is it you're supposed to reject it because it's authoritarian. It's and no, they, but the, they the whole, get it. Oh. So it's like, well, but you should. You 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 will spread it, and this you will cost horrifying. people their lives no. and stuff. No, it's terrifying. Maybe, maybe not. But it's, that's not what you're objecting against. You're objecting the fact that they knock on your door and fucking hold you down to jab you. Damn, yeah. it, don't they? You see, but these, I mean, I'm talking about people that are famous anarchists that I talk to, and they, mm -hmm. these are. I mean, it's like, man, I'm thinking, fuck, have we lost our way? No, but listen yeah. to fucking Chomsky. I mean, fucking... Ch and, and then you look back and you go, oh, my God, Chomsky is a fucking liberal and always has been. Oh, yeah. They're all fucking liberals underneath. That's yeah. it. Yeah, but this is how you know everybody's a fucking uh, authoritarian when it comes out. I mean, it's terrifying. All of that. I mean, I, I mean, I'm grateful to this virus bioweapon thing to having put this up front because again, I, I think this is where um, there was the you know the post about um, with a clip from Life is Sweet, and there's that character there who's that sort of uh, archetypal or, or comedy sort of teenager, sort of stuck in that sort of teenage mindset. And I've been watching the rewatching the movie today and and it's like um you know that i've been one of those people i, I have and, and clung proudly to this of like basically saying we live in a fascist society there's there's a very very thin veneer of uh, of something polite looking that separates this from nazi germany which again is my fetish um but the, but the, you know uh, looking at it as someone who's resides in the uk but used to live in israel um is like i live in a fascist society it's exactly the same as nazi germany and and the smallest thing will just they'll whip away the thin veneer of respectable whatever it is and and the naziness of it uh, will be revealed and interestingly enough i've always be believed that that fundamental naziness is in the human beings and this is what you see now and this has come out with this vaccine thing and uh, uh, you, you know that the fact that every everybody every mate you've ever had is suddenly going, oh, you don't like the uh, you're an anti-vax, are you? 
and blah 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 and that everybody's turning into these extremely like you should be dragged off and it, and, and like really cool people are going oh yeah no you should be dragged off i'm even vaccinated right which i'm regretting somewhat and i'm glad i had the the normal vaccine the oxford one and not the fucking mrna thing but i'm not having any more because it's just too weird and yeah anyway but, I, I, didn't, the, didn't the veneer get stripped away so quick no, I mean, but that's my thing. I mean, I've always believed it. I mean, it's like the you, last thing you I mean, want is your I'm beliefs to be confirmed. All you needed to get to to just like turn this whole globe into a fascist hell uh, or totalitarian monstrosity it's is sniffles. you just have to scare the liberals. You just yeah, you just say like, ooh, I I'm scared of um, I'm scared of this uh, this disease, and it's yeah. like, oh, okay, well, let's just like chuck everything everybody's ever fought for for the last century down the toilet. It's yeah. like you know. It's like and they'll wow, still go on my grams like that for that was no. freaking quick. Is that all it took? Yeah. Really? No, no, because it was never it was always there. That's that's the terrifying thing. And I, yeah, I hate being proved thing. right. Yeah, it's everybody was a little Hitler underneath, and there yeah. it comes out. Even yeah. even anarchists or uh, you know, Noam Chomsky, little little Hitler underneath is saying, like, yeah. well, we should all those Not people should be quarantined. And, oh, in oh really, no, in death camps. You know why? When you're going to deliver the gas? When you can't feed us anymore, you bastard! What a yeah. turncoat! Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Anyway, they oh. always were like that. I think. Yeah, yeah. It's because always. Yeah, it, it's bizarre. It, nobody. Uh, yeah, the conversation went into the into the toilet in anarchism for decades. So I think. Yeah, let let's just quietly get back on track <laughs> yeah i know I, yeah I, I think so yeah so sort of yeah it would be again my sort of uh again a, a chronos mindset is then thinking okay then you need to have or not you need to have but you know oh yeah let's have a sort of structure of degrees of exposure to the inner workings of the thing uh and and have a sort of you know have a bait to invite people uh, to participate at this level, and then, la -da -da, uh, you know, I don't know. Just, uh, playfully, I'm thinking, really, but um, and I think it's, you know, yeah, it's I, interesting. I think it must be flexible because I, I've noticed myself getting a bit mean spirited. The, the, the I mean, <laughs> I, I'm sitting here on a boat, and I'm surrounded by all these rich fucks in super yachts, making a wake and destroying the fish, and you know, basically. Uh, flying in and out in helicopters and private jets and watching them act like fucks on the deck with, you know, with with guards and servants and, you know, setting up on a private beach and to have a picnic with champagne. And I, and I just like thinking, man, I want the oil to end. Every time they, like, mm. roar past me way too close and just about, you know, swamp my boat with a massive wake of the super yacht, I just think, you know, mm -hmm. I cannot, I just, just, just want the oil to run out just so these fucks stop this shit. Yeah. And uh, I, th I find myself thinking, like, nah, I mean, come on, there's not much time left to go. I think I must be more generous and just say, like, yeah, if, if these guys want to live abundantly, I, you know, this fascist friend of mine who's super rich and a big super yacht, I'd say, like, not a super yacht, but a big yacht, and he's uh, with a big crew and stuff. And he's like, mm. You know, he says, like, live abundantly. I don't understand all these left-wing people with their, you know, austerity. <laughs> it's, like, yeah. Yeah. it's unbelievable. I'm thinking these days, you've got to say good luck to him because, you know, it's like every, if we really are in the end times, let everybody do whatever they want. Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, it's, it's not that we can do anything about it anyway. So I, mean, exactly. I think it's just like it's exactly. just. No, it's nobody's going to raise a finger against them. Nobody's going to monkey wrench them. The five hundred lone wolves. You can't find five hundred lone wolves and eight billion people. So oh, no, well, we're not yeah, doing it. Just either, take so. a new tack. You've just got to yeah. take a new tack. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, at the end of the day, and and again, there's there's things that you really can't talk about, and so there might be things that other people would be talking about if you could, but basically, yeah. Those lone wolves, well, I, I am not one, and I haven't seen any anywhere that I'm aware of. They, they yeah. are out there, but they, it, it, you know, I don't think they're going to reach a, a critical mass. A small number mm. that you need, um, and then they they have to, they can, you can bring the system down, but you have to keep it down. That's that's challenging. Yeah. I think, you know, well, that's, that's, that's again, another lesson from this sort of uh, episode where 
yeah again i would have liked to see the planes out of the sky for for longer but you know they are fighting to get back to all of that and um yeah but hey at least well, i can I buy a webcam this, this, now i i think that this we must explore all these ideas um mm. but i think that there is a sweet spot where um there's a perfect amount of or, or rates of greenhouse gas emissions that yeah. matches a corresponding melt in in the Greenland ice sheet. So the you see if you if you put up too much CO2, there's there's a lag and there's you know um, it wouldn't translate instantly to melting. It's kind of like um, you know you're on the wrong end of the curve. Mm -hmm. But I think that on the you know if you if you start drawing down greenhouse gases, you're not going to change the result. There's still going to be a flipping. Yeah, but it'll you'll you'll uh, exacerbate the social consequences and the risk involved in you know, the ecological damage as the system slowly fizzles. Yeah. I think this if this is system fizzling would be much more damaging and risky in the long run. So there must be a sweet spot where it's you know maximum ice melt, maximum end to the you know civilization, and so I think it's worth a bit of research for people yeah. that are technical minded to go to say what what you know kind of like nordhaus and say you know the, this is the perfect greenhouse image. and I, you know what funnily enough I, i'm always surprised at the at this but we're probably on that track we're probably naturally on that track i'm always surprised that when it comes down to it we are heading in that direction like this giant teleology of this predestiny yeah. or something but it's, yeah um, i mean is it possible that there are, are forces that are acting from outside of our awareness yeah almost like that in all in a, like it's meant to be kind of thing yeah. you know because like, uh, i don't you know i don't have a strong view on those things so yeah i mean yeah maybe you know with all this it's like oh that you know maybe there is a sort of um a religious view you could take of this or you know, whether i you know people uh, in my life who believe that there are uh, I don't know what you say, invisible forces or whatever that have got a, a there's a there's a bigger meaning to all of this that we we can't perceive because we are just a bunch uh, of stupid no, monkeys. No, not so much that. Not so much that. I think it's an algorithm. We're watching the algorithm unfold. So it's it's like a chemical yeah, well, reaction. That's, or that's the same, that same. Is, well, yeah, and but it doesn't need any see. metaphysical entities or anything. Yeah. It's just you, you know, it's it's the whole system. Uh, works as this kind of totality. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it, it has its own destiny and it's working its way wonderfully. And we're part of it. We think we have autonomy and free choice and stuff. Now nah, we, we actually just part of this divine comedy that's un unfolding. Yeah. yeah, it's completely scripted. It often appears completely scripted. Yeah, well, it's so, unfolding yeah. according to mechanical laws of some sort. I mean, I think the idea that that we as human beings can can sort of discern with any level of confidence what the fuck's going on and whether there's, uh, you know, consciousness or just a mechanism or whatever is, is I mean, it's beyond you know my comprehension to to speculate. So there's there's nine hundred stories that you could tell yourself, and any one of them would, would do, I suppose. Um, yeah, but uh, it's whenever we think we're pulling the strings, that's just because they're pulling the strings to make us think that. <laughs> yeah, well, no, exactly, exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> so you you can't really escape. So that's that's why I like putting the no escape things up because it's like so that, is that's that... the one thing everybody hates is that they don't have control, and that's the one thing the the, the quickest path. That's the royal road to enlightenment. I, you realize you don't have any control. You absolutely. Yeah. Have I mean, uh, we don't have any control, and yet, uh, you know, well, the control we do have is is really reinforcing our lack of control. Yeah, and it's and it's uh, but the thing is that you sort of behave. You know, uh, the thing is a lot of people take that to mean, oh, I don't have any control. So if I walk up to that person and slap them, well, it's not my fault. And kind uh, of no, no, that's no. I mean, true. in an Oedipal sense. I mean, in yeah. an Oedipal sense. The, 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 in every the, sense. You know, Every input we do to avoid yeah. our fate is basically yeah. getting us closer to our fate yeah. every day. Yeah. It's kind of like the, the Islamic view. It's yeah. A, an old Islamic thing, you know. It's the, the journey to Samara is the, the story. That right. Yeah, I I'm not familiar with that. But I mean, I, I, I do think just that, that it's like uh, just for from a practical point of view, 
um, that that being able to to know that you don't have control, but at the same time, on a day to day basis, you can still act as if you do. Um, yeah, but knowing your actions are going to uh, reinforce the destiny you're trying to avoid. Yeah, well, you just don't, words, yeah. you don't have any actions in those things because the, the actions you th think you take in a certain direction are actually taking you towards the direction you're trying to avoid. So yeah. therefore, we don't really have free will because we we don't have the ability to choose a destiny other than the one we're on track for anyway. So you can you can yeah. put in a lot of activity, but you'll realize afterwards that it was all it's scripted. Yes. By by forces beyond your control. So, yeah, it's the idea that we can set a, plot a course to a direction that nature never intended is to lose now. And I no, no, I'm and, and and yeah, I'm I'm and I I not that it's really worth anything, but I mean I I completely agree with this perspective that for instance the um uh, what do you call it the uh, engineering thingy environmental engineering is is just you know basically just fucking leave it alone now leave it alone suffer suffer the consequences you know we have to just suffer the consequences of of what we as a entity if we are one have done but just fucking leave it all alone now and again that that does work on a personal uh level as well so there is a sort of spiritual and again i feel wanky saying spiritual but you know the um you know there is there is those, those mechanisms well it's fractal as you say you know so there's the same sort of mechanisms uh go down down the hierarchy and up the hierarchy i suppose uh, yeah you see i don't i don't think there is such a thing as spirituality because uh, they, yeah. they everybody thinks there's a special compartment or an elevated plane or a met physics spirit you know there's no metaphysics it just looks that way <laughs> it's just but it's 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 all physics so you know yeah. i think that um you know that's oh yeah but that, that's you know, same same again though isn't it hugh because you know because yeah. what we're saying is like that which i would in inverted commas call spiritual is those things that that are part of physics that i can't really comprehend in the same way that i can comprehend yeah uh, whatever I well, comprehend. this is kind of Gary's question about um, David Icke about you know, are the reptoids literal or or figurative? Right. Are they just is it a metaphor? And I'm saying, well, it's they both, both the same. There's no such thing as the me yeah. metaphor and the the literal. When when you come back with you know in retrospect, you'll see. So in other words, the flippening. If if you it, so this is here's a bit of conceit of mine. Is it if the flipping comes before you reach enlightenment, the flipping, the physical flipping of the globe will cause your enlightenment in those moments. And yeah. if, if you actually achieve the metaphorical flipping in your psychology before, you know, they're both exactly the same, but mm -hmm. I think they all converge and coincide. It's kind of like Kairos and Kronos meeting. So one, mm -hmm. you know, the, the one in the physical world is chronological. That, that flip will be chronological and you could determine it if you had enough computing power yeah. in, in great detail um but the uh, kairos is the psychological flipping that you're gonna get whether you like it or not and yeah. i think there's this kind of kairos gammas this kind of marriage of the two in the final you know the final outcome but yeah, you might just be run over by a bus before the main event <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely and it would be, yeah, it would be no good if you knew that that wasn't going to happen. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I think, I think, so, uh, yeah, it just, so there's, there is a sort of space, I guess, for then developing, well, again, because I'm going to say spiritual again, notwithstanding the fact that that doesn't really mean anything, but, well, you know. Well, so psychological is, is yeah. more, less charged and loaded. I'll it's try like and find something else. Spirituality yeah. in disguise. But it loses something. So this is like uh, I wanted to ask you actually. Have you have you consumed any of Lionel's literature? No, I've watched some of his videos and I've seen some of his vlog posts, but I haven't read a book or anything. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. Let me, I'd like to remedy that. I'll contact you. Um. I, I mean, not that I'm I'm not evangelizing, but I, I just I find his uh thing because he's. Uh, yeah, maybe we could talk about it because his his because um, yeah. that's psychological, really. I think he's you know he's about magic and stuff. But when I read it, it's philosophy, um, and I don't know much. Anyway, I'm just thinking in terms of like terminology. Psychological sounds too much like you know um, 
uh, Freud and, and this. So maybe there's a magical, maybe we could call it magic then. I don't know. Um, well, you see, magic people are prejudiced against, but it is magic. It used to be called alchem alchemical magic. Yeah. But Jung, Jung was all about alchemical magic, and they yeah. pilloried him for it in psychology. So you can't really win. Like no, but within our, within our framework or within our uh, group of people, if the other participants would be interested in pursuing... Uh, there's a, there, there seems to be like a space for exploring whatever. Uh, yes, but, but, but my, my, my belief is you shouldn't name it and label it. Just yeah, go okay. ahead and do it. And okay. then everybody's open to it because then, yeah. you know, once you put a label on it and call it something, yeah. immediately everybody's, yeah. you know, hackles up and they're yeah. categorizing it. And they, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's okay. Like a box. So, yeah. 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 So if I so if I could figure out a way to uh, get involved with that, that would be cool. Without calling it anything. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be really nice if people did things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in private and and then you know. Yeah. Um, I guess the thing is like not wanting to to be uh, you know wanting to take an initiative as a sort of yeah just just so yeah. Okay. No, I yeah. think we should take, we can like take an initiative yeah. and do, yeah. you know, cool. do do a group of whatever you're interested in. Start a, a subgroup and stuff. The, yeah. the only thing is, I I, I feel that um, you you should share stuff. You in the sense of giving back to the you know the world. Yes. In a wider sense, because uh, what happens time and time again is is a small group can make progress, but they the danger is you're heading off to the jungle in Guiana, in a sense, yeah. and uh, it becomes very insular, it becomes mm -hmm. isolated, it becomes its own worst enemy. So yeah. you kind of have to give and uh, give up a little bit and sacrifice. And all, yeah. in all but you could have a, then a, a sort of public slash private interaction happening. That was oh, no, just just give it back a little. So some some yeah. some of some of the you know the golden thread that you spin. Uh, you just have to pass it out as charity, really. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in some oh, yeah, form totally. or other. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, just don't don't hoard. See, the problem is people get into these groups and start hoarding the chi. <laughs> yeah, and you should actually the chi will go sour on you. The best mm -hmm. way to ferment chi is to give it out. <laughs> Well, that's, you know, I mean, that's maybe, you know, yeah. So that would be, if if there were tendencies to move in that direction, we could always give each other a nudge. As well, yeah, which... well, you'd know it's because it would start to go a bit stale and it wouldn't be working very well. Mm. And then you say, well, I wonder why this is kind of not working. Uh, people would think that privately to themselves. And the answer mm. is, you're not sharing. <laughs> not sharing, yeah. Not no, sacrificing, that makes sense. not sharing. Yeah. Well, I guess hence hence this to some extent. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You see, you see. Uh, okay, so the, here's a good example. So, so from this the conversation that we've just had, uh, mm -hmm. if you if I post this now on YouTube, you you have a look. Go and have a look and see what people say. But what I'm mm -hmm. sure people will say, come back and say things positive and say this cleared up a lot of things for them and a lot of things they were thinking. And then that gives you a little boost. That mm -hmm. makes makes you feel good, makes, and then you can see how it feeds back on its stuff. Yeah. Yeah. This this is how you get airborne. <laughs> oh no, flying queue. I'm I'm land based. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, what about rocket ships and Mars? I know. Fuck. Oh. No. No thanks. Don't, don't you want a one-way trip to Mars to die in a horrible radiation-filled? No, but I, I, I definitely. Nothing grows. No, I could give you a passenger list though for that for that trip. <laughs> I a few people. <laughs> Basically, the Hitchhiker's Guide list, right? Yep. <laughs> Douglas Adams. He, he he had the list of all the guys to go to Mars. It's amazing how how far ahead of his time Douglas Adams was. Yeah, I haven't haven't uh, read all that stuff in so long, but um, yeah, no, I'd, I'd definitely be able to provide a list, and I'd be be there to watch them go, um, just to be on the safe side. 
Um, yeah. Me too. Me too. Well, I did that. I did that cartoon, and that was kind of what we're supposed to be about the Pooba and Piglet. Mm -hmm. which, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but there again, you see it reversed on them because they're trying to make make sure that it was a one way trip. So they made the monkey wrenched his rocket, and he wound up coming back. To <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, <laughs> should, oh. should have left him to go there. You know. Damn it. I mean, I think, yeah, I don't, you know. Uh, on, I'm beyond, I, I can't even speculate what any of that's about. I mean, I can't imagine these people are stupid enough think, to think they can go and live on Mars. So, I mean, I, I almost like, stupid. if you, yeah, if, I mean, yeah, they're, okay, yeah, they are, they are that stupid, aren't they? But yeah, maybe they're, maybe they're actually just going to go and hang out and wait for the flipping and come back again. I think you suggested that uh, was a viable. Yeah, I've, I'm very suspicious, you see, because there are various factions that know about this, um, and I, you know, they're all weird people. I mean, I think like the, the LDS, the Church of the Latter Day Saints. <laughs> I, I think they uh, are privy to this because they've infiltrated the government up and down. And but they, you know, you never know. With these these guys are a set, all the billionaire class, and they have their own rules. Who who is in and out? Like for example, Trump is definitely out. He's definitely an outsider. Yeah. And um, Elon Musk, I'm not sure he's an insider. And um, and Jeff Bezos, he doesn't seem like an insider to me. So so you know, it's it's like I get very very suspicious when when NASA's giving these guys money to mm -hmm. uh, tax money to to actually make these rockets and stuff. And he's like, I'm just thinking, oh, I know somebody thinks somewhere thinking they're gonna yeah. they're gonna dodge this. No, because NASA is the kind of old, old Nazis um, and sort of they European, um, yeah, sort of Alistair Crowley, magic, Gestapo, whatever. Um, yeah, JPL, you know. yeah, yeah. Um, Jack Parsons and, yeah. and all of those guys. And, yeah, yeah it's, um, that's all that sort of old oh, European, yeah. um, dark black magic sort of people I, I think of, you know. Oh, yeah, um, and they, they all, um, with, with the runes and the um the yeah all all that kind of stuff it's yeah they they all carrying on with that stuff and so it's all involved you can't yeah. you can't really escape it so actually so musk and really and um it. and uh bezos and whatever are just some sort of sacrificial entities that are yeah. being oh, yeah, they'll do like that magic because they, yeah. Yeah, yeah because they can be fired into space and they're giant penises and detonated yeah or... those guys are upstarts they, they will use yeah. those guys like you know, like yeah. criminals, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. the uh, Sil Silicon Valley. These, a lot of these guys are in the wine country in Sonoma and Silicon Valley and stuff like that. And they, they, like you say, they're very, you know, it's America's aristocracy. America doesn't even know it has an aristocracy mm -hmm. because these guys fly under the radar. But they, you know, they have um, in uh, what do you call it? Um, I keep on calling it Mill Valley, but it's in the woods that. Um, uh, the what's the name of woods uh, where they hang out and do weird ceremonies? Oh, the thing with the owl, the giant owl you're talking about. That's um, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Minerva's owl. Yeah, you know, that. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so they, they they hang out and do all this stuff in um, the woods, damn it. Yeah, um, it's, um, anyway, it's just up there near Mole Valley. Um, it's near the Russian River. But the. Um, yeah, the, that's only one of many <laughs> those, those things, and they um, and the, those guys are entrenched guys. So you, if you you see guys like um, uh, Dole and um, uh, who, who's the Secretary of State at the moment? Um, uh, the I've candidate guy, well, I, you know, who threw away his medals. I've just forgotten his name. Uh, um, yeah, Kerry, I can't Kerry, John, John yeah, Kerry, okay. like John Kerry is one of those guys. Yeah, but he's, that's, he's, that's, he's that's, one of guys. that's the European, uh, yeah, contingent, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's basically the Illuminati. And mm -hmm. then with, with those guys, they will use upstarts uh, like like Musk and and uh, Bezos and stuff. But they they keep them on a whim. So you know, I mean, Musk is a hair's breadth at any any stage of becoming a pauper. Yeah. And people don't realize that. They think, you know, they they misunderstand this game. <laughs> and so, yeah, they they quite capable of feeding feeding him public money for him to, you know, build a space station for them to survive yeah. the 
happening on. But we must talk about all those, those kind of strategies because, you know, I, I have my opinion on whether you can survive it that way. And I don't think you can because I don't think you can run and get in a rocket. You won't have enough warning. But No, no, they'd, any, have to, they'd have to be sort of on a moon base or something like that for years. Yeah, but nobody knows. You, you know, don't know what they're, the yeah. Your landing so, site so won't be there like, when you're done. Yeah, I mean, you might spend a decade wasting your life yeah. on the fucking wrong side of <laughs> Talks yeah. out of the moon, and it's like, well, what's the point of that? Um, so, yeah, all of these things I think are good topics to discuss. Now we kind of come open with the flipping. Yeah, I like but, it. I mean, I, I'm very, very interested to find out if if anyone gets drawn in by this narrative because it is. It's. I mean, again, I'd never heard anything about this idea before I read your book. Uh, and it's brilliant. I'm, I'm very interested to see if anybody gets knocked off discussing this publicly <laughs> oh literally knocked off yeah i mean that would be yeah which one <laughs> someone doesn't turn up I, on a sunday you mean yeah, yeah like me especially <laughs> it's oh, like, yeah. i didn't want to say uh, yeah but uh yeah um i you know i'm not sure what the landscape is like on that i it's um i'm not sure you know i i mean i sometimes I wonder if, uh, like, Assange has uh, something in his stash or something like that. I mean, yeah, Mike, but there was always the thing that he said, because he had that that um, WikiLeaks, there was, a, a like, a stash of files that was distributed on BitTorrent, because I, I, I think uh, people downloaded it, and it, that was supposed to be his, like, um, kill switch thing, that if he got arrested, yeah. this thing... And I can't remember what the outcome was, but but he said something about that they had knowledge of aliens and UFOs or something, which I think was just um, saying dramatic shit because I can't remember that WikiLeaks had anything on mm. aliens or UFOs that came out. But uh, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, but uh, I mean, you see, you you got to watch out for guys like uh, McAfee and, and those those guys. So there there are a lot of weird guys. I, I might categorize myself in that kind of thing. But there are a lot of weird and wacky guys on the fringe of all of this stuff because the mm -hmm. stuff that goes on in the like CIA and all this stuff is like it's unbelievable mad shit. And yeah. so it attracts unbelievable, wacky, mad, interesting, fascinating. Yeah, characters. Have to, yeah, yeah. But but so so those guys, like if if I had to say what is McCaff what did McAfee know and what did like Elon Musk know, I'd say I'd put a lot of money on McAfee having more information than Musk. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because because Musk wouldn't be on Joe Rogan smoking spliffs if he had a fucking clue about anything. Yeah, McAfee wouldn't do that. That's that's yeah. the difference. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, I mean I, I, there's got to be, me. yeah, there, there's got to be a whole bunch of people that no one's heard of. Uh, and they're the ones who know something interesting. So, so the odds. Oh, yeah, I mean, I reckon yeah. that people like McAfee would have been, yeah, somebody who's just a bit too unhinged. Um, and you, yeah, uh, as you say, there's, no, there's, they're, there's, they're all seriously unhinged. Seriously, yeah. they're all seriously. Unhinged. But, but the, the 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 guys in Scientology and the guys in um, LDS and stuff, uh, you'd be surprised um, <laughs> what they know and yeah. what they're part of. In fact, yeah, and and lots of other groups like that. But anyway. Yeah, well, um, fascinating shit. But all right, should we should we round it off there? And yeah, I think I think that's that's a reasonably good place to end and begin, if you like. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, no, I've enjoyed chatting to you nice very to much. Uh, likewise, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, okay. So you know, let's keep this conversation going. Absolutely. All hail the flipping. <laughs> no, be careful of that. All <laughs> hail. Uh, <laughs> you can't get far away from the once you're in the ruin territory and the Venetian territory, you're on oh, no, very I, delicate ground. It's already, it's already it's problematic. Symbology. Yes. The, well, the, I've already raised my uh... yeah, the symbology is problematic, but you I, I I just you can't get away from it, man. It's, <laughs> this, this stuff is uh, the Nazis will... raided it. So yeah. you, we can't hand yeah. it over to the Nazis because they 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 delve deep in this bucket, yeah. and somebody should have slapped their hand, not say, "Oh, you know, given away the bucket to them." Well, they yeah, but we're that's not going to help us necessarily. 
No, but the danger for us is uh, people are going to say, you know, like, oh, yeah. you a bunch of yeah. Yeah. white supremacists yeah. secretly or something. Yep. Yeah. That's guaranteed 100%, I think. Yeah, the, the counter is you just, just have so much weird shit that people can't make Arthur or Martha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I think I think that is the, that's the thing. That's why having a sort of a cult front uh, yeah. would make sense to my mind. Yeah, I, I like taunting people. I, w I will admit to, yes. to putting those little, you know, brackets around the <laughs> around the emojis. It's like, I did that to many people, and yeah. a, a few people bit and said like, you know, "Hey, it's like uh, old right stuff, isn't it?" <laughs> I was like, no, I was just, just yeah. fishing. Yeah. It is, yeah. It's but it's tricky because it's like uh, like everybody's going to flip out. But this is the thing. Already, you've you know, you might as well. When you, oh, I don't know. It's it is that sort of just everything is really fucking. It. I mean, the insanity is is on the surface now, and now the fact that it's someone like you or me or whoever else is going, oh, everything is fucking crazy. Uh, that's already now. Now you've labelled yeah. yourself already. Just saying, look, you're fucking. Yeah. Everybody I know is well, well, fucking insane. I'm insane. Everything's crazy, and that's already dangerous. No, but there, but there, there's some there's some protection in in ambiguity. So <laughs> it's, it's, yes. there's um you know if if I'm caught in a dark alleyway, I'll that um you know by some right wing fascists. Uh, no, our point is like, yeah, it's all fascist. <laughs> you know, look at a symbology. <laughs> I'll definitely do that. I'll go the other route too. If uh, you know we're yeah somebody catches uh, on the other way. So there's definitely like, ambivalence is uh, pretty pretty good in a totalitarian system. Yeah, anyway. It depends on yeah. how it plays I, out. I wish I could tell more, more stories, but um, unfortunately, a lot of this stuff is ongoing. And so I can only say so much on mm -hmm. online, you know, uh, with years yeah, always risk of comeback oh so yeah yeah I, I, yeah if 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 what i understand to be the case is the case as yeah i would be saying less than you because <laughs> <I'm... laughs> yeah yeah I, I am getting bolder these days yeah yeah all right well it's been great cool. and uh yeah do take care you too i appreciate it thanks hugh all right all about